Hey, what time is it? And while we're asking questions, how do you really know what time it is? Well, the answer in many ways depends on where you are geographically. However, the way we humans, and in fact many other forms of life on Earth, tell time is through an evolutionarily conserved rhythmic distribution of our most basic functioning over 24 hours. Of course, I'm referring to circadian rhythms, which are our body's way of adapting to the environment in which we find ourselves. So, the Earth's surface and the solar day and night. Let's take a moment to consider you, for example. You might be a night owl or a morning lark, but either way, there's a pattern to when you and your body engage in certain activities. You might, after a period of restful sleep, wake up at the same time every day, brush your teeth, feed your cat, and feed yourself. If you're not quite a morning person, you might have a much-needed cup of coffee. You might head to work or school and think about and do all kinds of things in the process. You might type away at your computer, read books, drink more coffee, listen to music, and lo and behold, eat your next meal, be it dinner or lunch, before another period of rest and digest. The point is, our bodies are not built to work at a constant rate. We do different tasks like sleeping, waking, and metabolizing at different times of the day in response to cues in our environment. Now you might ask, aren't circadian rhythms a brain thing? Well, yes, in many ways they are. Though every cell in the human body has its own molecular clock, the mastermind of the circadian operation sits in the hypothalamus, a small but essential control center that consists of several distinct groups of cells, or nuclei. A bilateral group of nuclei at the anterior part of the hypothalamus are known as the suprachiasmatic nuclei, or SCN. These nuclei are essential for internal timekeeping as they generate rhythmic gene and protein expressions and rhythmic electrical activity, which sets the tone for the rest of the brain and indeed the rest of the body. But how does the SEN know what time it is? The SEN clocks evolved to adapt to the Earth's axial rotations. In response to solar or otherwise artificial light entering the eyes, ganglion cells in the retina transmit light information to the SEN via the retinohypothalamic tract. These inputs then inform the SEN that it is likely to be, for example, morning time. So the SEN will start its rhythmic electrochemical protocol and direct the rest of the body's peripheral clocks to start their daily programs too. But what if there is no light? In the 1960s, a group of German scientists sought to understand whether circadian rhythms persisted in the absence of cues from the Earth's environment. So they sent a group of research volunteers into a bunker and examined how the lack of light-dark information affected their perceptions of time and their physiologies. Interestingly, even in the absence of the external world cues, the SCN and indeed the rest of the human physiology still outputted rhythmic 24-hour activities. What happens if external light doesn't match the internal time of day? If you've ever journeyed across multiple time zones, pulled an all-nighter or had a shift work job, you might have noticed some confusing side effects in relation to your sleep-wake cycling. You might have difficulty initiating or maintaining sleep and struggle with your mood or in making decisions. What you've experienced is called circadian dysrhythmia, more commonly known as jet lag. This disorder occurs when the body's SEN is out of sync with the external environment. The speed at which the body adjusts to a new rhythm depends on the individual, as well as on the direction of travel, with eastbound travel exerting the most severe jet lag effects. What happens if we're no longer on Earth? Consider the International Space Station, where human astronauts quite literally are cutting themselves off from the time-giving cues that they evolved to survive in. Light is a particularly important cue to control for while in the ISS, as instead of experiencing a single sunset and sunrise, ISS astronauts experience 16 per day and spend most of the time in low light. How confusing! Light experience in this way can disrupt human sleep, which has huge impacts on mood and decision-making while in orbit. Whether you're a pilot, aircraft steward, astronaut, or even a terrestrial being here on Earth's surface, it's important to take care of your circadian rhythms by maintaining a healthy sleep-wake cycle and, where possible, keeping in touch with your environmental roots.